Patrick McNeil back here at the intermission, joined now by Halifax Mooseheads Media Relations and Communications Manager Scott McIntosh. If you've been to Halifax, you've seen him on the big screen before. Scott, we're going to touch on all things Mooseheads related. We'll start off, I guess, your thoughts on the Moosehead season thus far. Trying to make way in a tough Eastern Conference. Is this where you expect them to be? I expected the team to maybe be a little higher in the standings. It's been a bit of a disappointment this season, but that being said, we didn't actually see the full Mooseheads lineup until a week ago when Jared McIsaac finally came back and you got to see what type of team I guess this could have been with the big guns like Raphael Lavoie, Benoit Olivier Gru, Max Trapanier, McIsaac, and Barron on the back end. Gravel played excellent that game against Blaineville. It was a 3 nothing shutout win. What could have been, everyone expected it to be obviously down from last year, which was the big year, the Memorial Cup year, which was built towards. There were a lot of new faces this year, but I kind of expected them to be a little higher in the standings at this point. It's been a bit of a disappointment, but a learning curve as well. New head coach in place, and we'll see where it goes from here on out. You mentioned Raphael Lavois, who, of course, was someone people were pegging to go in round one. He ends up going in round two to Edmonton. How do you think he responded to that mentally based on what you've seen from him this year? You know, he's a competitive guy, and I think that probably bruised the ego just a little bit. But that being said, he still was a very high draft pick. So I think in the end, he was very happy to be going to a place like Edmonton and can think of himself playing alongside of Connor McDavid at some point down the road. But he came back ready to roll as well and kind of firing on all cylinders right now. He is a pure goal scorer, that kind of guy that you want the puck on his stick. Not always going to set up the plays and be a playmaker, but if you want a goal scorer, that's... That's your guy, and I think that was proof in the pudding last playoff run when he set a franchise record with 20 goals in the President Cup playoffs. I wanted to reflect back, too, on that playoff run, more so the Memorial Cup, looking at it from your point of view, how successful was that as an event? There was a lot going on. Were you happy with how everything played out in terms of that? We were, and I'll tell you, it was a lot of work from the business staff standpoint. We often said it was kind of like trying to run two hockey teams simultaneously. We had our Moosehead stuff that we had to do daily basis, and then working with the host organizing committee as well to get things done. So it was a lot of work, but it really paid off in the end. The city was buzzing with fans and excitement in May, and all of the downtown business owners were extremely happy with the way everything went between Bar restaurants, hotels, everything was packed all week long and heard nothing but good reports, including from the mayor, Mike Savage, who was incredibly happy with how things went. So it was awesome to be a part of, honestly, and really enjoyed it. It might be a once in career thing for myself to be able to experience because you never know when that will get back here again and if I'll still be around with the organization. That was a really fun time to be a part of. And yeah, we were ecstatic with how everything went and to have the team reach the final was almost the icing on the cake. The icing on the cake, I guess, would have been a championship final victory, but to get that far, we were very happy and proud. Certainly a tremendous week from what I can say, having been there myself. Of course, we like to touch on different marketing initiatives. I think the one thing that stood out watching Halifax from afar this year is 90s night. You guys really went all in with the pogs and the NHL 94 graphics. Tell us about that. Yeah, it's something that I've been kind of pushing myself because it's right in my wheelhouse, being a guy that grew up as a teenager in the 90s. We've been kind of building on it. We did it as a lark, really, last year, and we're like, hey, let's do some fun things, and then built on it this year. Next year, we'll take it to the next level as well. I fully expect to see those retro Mooseheads jerseys out there next year, which will be even better. But this year, we did a lot of NHL 94 type stuff with the pregame video and had a little fun with our rival Moncton Wildcats as well. So to put those videos together, we had Cody Cudmore does a fantastic job with their graphics department. He put a lot of work into that as well. And then Ben Mendelson, who does our video work for us, helped out and, and put it all together. So things like that, playing the 90s music. Chris Dyer has the office next to me here, Game Day Operations. Uh, spent a lot of time researching some old videos we would have seen on television in this part of the world back in the early 90s and mid-90s. We have a lot of fun with it, and I think it's only going to grow from here. And the fans have really bought in as well, and we had a great turnout that night. Ticket sales were really well. Fans are now getting into it and starting to dress in 90s attires. I think you'll see it at another level again next year. Very exciting. A player I wanted to ask about an interesting story to me is Senna Peters, who has an interesting background because he comes from Belgium. Not a lot of players come from there, but yet represents somebody different internationally. Tell us what you know about his story in terms of his route to the CHL. 
Yeah, Santa Peters, he is the only player from Belgium to ever play for the Mooseheads, and a guy that Cam Russell saw on a scouting trip last year, really liked. He was on his short list of players that he'd like to take in the import draft, and when he was still available, he hopped on that. His father is a strength and conditioning coach, actually, for a hockey team in Austria, and actually Senna himself played on the line, the RB Hockey Academy in Austria, with Samuel Dubé, current Moosehead as well, and also played with Marcel Barinka with the same organization a couple of years years ago so some familiarity there and now he has recently got his citizenship to Austria and he's actually already left the team for now he's gone to play in the Division 1 IIHF World Junior Championship which starts this weekend or next week I believe He'll be representing Austria there and looking forward to see what he can do. Very interesting and fun to see hockey develop in different places well thanks for telling us about everything Mooseheads related Scott best of luck with the team the rest of the season. Thank you, Pat. That's Scott McIntosh, works in communications for the Halifax Mooseheads. You're listening to the intermission of Car Star, Cape Breton Eagles Hockey on 1270 CJCB.